In order to minimize the risk of unfavorable outcomes related to low colorectal resection of deep endometriosis in the lower and mid rectum, we routinely perform an original technique combining the deep rectal shaving using the plasma energy and the transanal disc excision using the contour transtar stapler. The movie shows the main steps of this procedure performed in a 30-year-old nullipara referred with a large endometriotic nodule infiltrating the right uterosacral ligament and the anterolateral wall of the low rectum, but sparing the vagina. Rectal infiltration measured 30 mm in diameter and was responsible for stenosis, as revealed by MRI and the rectal ultrasound and computed tomography-based virtual colonoscopy. The first step of the procedure is represented by a deep rectal shaving performed using exclusively the plasma energy and following an original technique which has already been described. Both deep lateral rectal spaces and rectovaginal septum located around the nodule are widely opened and the nodule is detached from surrounding healthy tissues. The dissection is facilitated by the lack of lateral thermal spread around the jet of plasma and the kinetic energy of the argon flow which opens deep spaces with minimal bleeding. Plasma energy is used to coagulate the vessels up to 3 mm of diameter in the dissecting plane and the larger vessels are coagulated by using bipolar diatermy forceps to achieve hemostasis. The dissection is performed either in close contact with the rectal wall because the lack of lateral thermal spread avoids the risk of delayed rectal fistula or in contact with macroscopic limits of fibrous nodule. As the tip of the handpiece is held at a distance from the tissues, the surgeon has a full visual control of anatomical structures exposed to the jet of plasma and can easily identify healthy spaces dissected by the gas flow. In our case, the dissection is performed up to the level of right levator muscles. The nodule is now detached from the rectum by orienting the jet of plasma tangentially on the rectum wall. At the end of this first step of the shaving, the rectum is completely freed up but the shaved area is rigid and hollow and still infiltrated by endometriosis foci. For this reason, we perform a second step of the shaving by in situ ablation of residual endometriotic foci of the shaved area, as described in a previous video article. In situ ablation renders the rectal wall supple and soft and thus makes the transanal disc excision feasible. Transanal excision is performed by the colorectal surgeon from rectal approach. He introduces the transanal dilator and identifies the shaved area by simultaneous transanal and laparoscopic view. He starts by placing three or four traction parachute sutures in the middle and outside the shaved area and verifies that the stitches do not narrow the rectum. The gynecological surgeon checks laparoscopically the correct place of the stitches and makes sure that vagina is not caught inside. The traction of the stitches induce the prolapse of shaved rectal wall that can now be resected using the contour transtar stapler, which is a device originally destined to remove rectal prolapse. The lubricated head of the stapler is introduced into 3 o'clock position with the joust faced counterclockwise. The device is then rotated and the shaved area gently pulled inside the joust until normal surrounding rectal wall is seated within the joust. The stapler retaining pin is applied and the stapler is closed around the tissues. After a closure period of 10 to 15 seconds, the stapler is applied and then removed. A new stapler cartridge is replaced and the device reintroduced into the rectum. This step may be repeated two or three times until full thickness resection of the shaved area. 
we emphasize that the success of the transanal excision is directly related to the depth of the shaving, as a rigid shaved areas can neither be prolapsed nor cocked inside the stapler jaws. For these reasons, we believe that in situ ablation of shaved area is a deciding factor to remove large rectal wall specimen. The diameter of the specimen removed in this patient measured 60 mm. The final stepper line is inspected for bleeding and sealing. In this case, a limited leakage was revealed in the middle of the stepper's line. Thus, the colorectal surgeon controlled it with three single razor bubble sutures. The gynecological surgeon checks laparoscopically the trajectory of the needles and prevents inadvertent injuries of pararectal vessels and vagina. In addition, bleeding occurred in two different loci and it was stopped by two over single razor bubble sutures. In this patient, at the end of the procedure, a surgical pad was applied on the staples line. A fibrillar mesh was placed transanally for next 48 hours to prevent any unnoticed intrarectal hematoma. Amentoplasty is routinely performed. Discontinuous stoma is only performed in patients with associated infiltration of posterior vaginal wall requiring simultaneous vaginal excision. Immediate postoperative outcomes were uneventful and bowel movements were normal beginning with day 5. To date, this procedure was successfully carried out in 17 women with mid and lower rectal endometriosis with only favorable rectal functional outcomes.